Good morning. Welcome to Pete's Garage. So, I'm making a lot of progress on the Suburban. However, as always, not everything goes according to plan. And so, today, I will be working on the brake system. When I installed the engine, I discovered that the brake booster actually touches the coil right there in the back. So, I got this. When I mentioned my dilemma to a friend of mine, he went into his storage container and pulled out this complete CUCV Hydro Boost kit from an 85, which will bolt into my truck. It has everything I need, but there are some things that I still need to do. I need to reverse these brake lines, replace everything from the booster to the master cylinder, and then I need a couple of uh, extra lines. Luckily, the power steering pump that came with my engine conversion is already set up with the correct Hydro Boost return. Okay, so one of the things that I have to do to get the vacuum booster out is I have to disconnect the push rod from the uh, brake pedal. next morning and it looks like there aren't any real leaks on the hydro boost system so a few questions that I've been asked about why I did the hydro boost is because the vacuum booster was rubbing on that coil right there you can see the rub marks on top of the boot so I didn't really have much of a choice and then my buddy had this hydro boost system sitting in a storage unit so I said hey yeah I'll do that I bought one line and everything mounted up and the line was the right one and everything's good. A question that I've been asked several times is did I change the the brake pedal for the hydro boost because there is some debate on whether or not this pedal will work. Now from my perspective the pedal bolted right up and I have full travel on the pedal and when I bled the master cylinder I got good firm brake pedal. I think it's good. I've seen a couple of people that have said no you can't do that because it will over travel and destroy the master cylinder but this master cylinder is exactly the same with the same bore and stroke and everything as my old one, all that is reversed is the chambers for the front and rear brakes. This is the big chamber for the disc brakes, this is a small chamber for the drums in the rear. 
So all I had to do was reverse these lines. So they were, this one was over here and this one was there. Whatever. They moved. I suspect I'm going to be fine. However, time will tell. I won't know for sure until I fire it up and actually try and use my brakes. But I generally think I'm going to be okay. I will come back and report on whether or not it worked. I'm to the point where... I need to start taking care of little things. I need to put the extenders on the headers so that I can plug in my O2 sensors. I need to start rebuilding the front end of the truck because um, I need to mount the computer and the throttle control. I need to take out the speedometer cable and the throttle cable because I don't need them anymore. And I need to punch a bunch of wires through the firewall. All these wires are for the um, for the TAC, the OBD2, and the check engine light. So I need to get all these into the truck, and then I need to do some wiring behind the dash. Just a note, the dash will not work. None of these gauges will work except for the fuel gauge. But I won't have oil pressure, temperature, or voltage because none of that is plugged in. I might have volts, but none of the rest of it is plugged in. My ultimate goal is to put in a Dakota digital dash. But, um, yeah, that's a lot of money, so it'll have to wait. But for now, what I'll do is, let's see, I've got it over here. I bought this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this with Torque Pro which I own and I'm going to use that for gauges until I can afford the Dakota Digital. So that's just kind of a little project update on where we're at. I would say that I'm two or three solid weekends away from firing this thing up.